Good morning, Kate, and welcome to the Local Paleo Show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Thank you for coming. And uh, good morning, Mark. How are you today? Wonderful, thank you. Wonderful. And you both look wonderful as well today, so I assume you are. <laughs> thank you. I'm doing, doing my best. Doing my best. Excellent. So, Kate, uh, you are the founder of Root and Revel. Is that how you say it, Root and Revel or Root Plus Revel? Nope, Root and Revel is correct. Root and Revel, and it's a food and wellness site helping people to get better using food as medicine, which is right up my alley. Yeah. Um, you say that you reverse your PCO, PCOS, mm -hmm. polycystic ovary syndrome, and leaky gut with food and holistic remedies. Uh, so let's dig into that. Um, can you tell us how you got to this point in your life? Well, how much time do you have? Um, about an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had been a food writer um, for magazines and newspapers for about a decade. I was um, not a critic per se, but I um, wrote about food news and trends and chef profiles and restaurant openings and that kind of stuff. I did recipes and wrote cookbooks and, um, and I've just always been a big foodie, but I started having some health problems um, about three years ago. And um, after a long journey of trying a lot of Western um, medications and prescriptions and doctors and things that just were not working, um, I decided to try to go a more natural route. And I ended up finding a ton of success and healing by um, changing my diet and using some holistic lifestyle changes. Did you uh, do your own research or did were you help um, with, uh, by someone? Yeah, it was definitely a combination. I, I had a holistic doctor here in Atlanta that I worked with. And so, you know, she kind of put me on a treatment plan and gave me some information. And then being the journalist that I am, I read about a dozen books on um, the conditions that I was diagnosed with and you know, tried to figure out um, on my own as well what, what would be best. And so there was a lot of trial and error um, and, and talking to other experts and seeing several other, you know, um, holistic uh, professionals like acupuncturists or a naturopathic doctor. And yeah, so it was a combination. Good, good. So um, how would you say that you being a food writer and uh, eating the food uh, that you did affect your health? How did well, they get to that, to that point where it made you sick? Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough to say whether the food made me sick or if just changing my diet and um, focusing more on anti-inflammatory foods kind of helped what was already happening. But certainly when I was writing about food for magazines, I was eating out, you know, four or five times a week. And I was having big meals. I was trying everything on the menu. I was, um, you know, just indulging all the time. And so there mm. was, um, you know, a lot of inflammatory foods, a lot of, um, you know, just extra, um, bad fats and sodium and sugar and alcohol and um yeah. so not yeah, to I mention think. not to mention the source of the, the fish the meat and all right. of that could right. be an uh, enormous influence considering uh that most of the animals in this country are fed uh, genetically engineered food exactly yeah so eating out a lot i think was kind of the the main issue. Right, right. A, a good friend of mine is a food critic and uh, um, unfortunately she's digging her grave with her fork because she's, uh, she's in really bad health and she's already had multiple hot, um, you know, uh, operations and so on and so forth. So I could see where that could have taken you if you didn't stop and pay attention. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I really had to mm -hmm. bring it in. <laughs> So can you tell us um, more about the PCOS, how it starts and how you got rid of it? Yeah. So PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And 
basically um, it manifests itself very differently in women and it's very common and it's often underdiagnosed. But basically the symptoms that I had were um, irregular cycles, weight gain, acne, um, you know, fatigue. I, um, it was just not great. And I had been on hormonal birth control pills for a long time. And when I went off of them to try to do things naturally is when my body kind of freaked out because these pills had been masking what my hormones were really doing. Mm. Um, so when I went off, I was totally miserable with all of these um, symptoms. And so I really, I, I worked closely with my doctor to figure out a treatment plan that did not involve taking prescription medication um, okay. or anything that would just mask the symptom, but really getting to the root. And so I, I changed my diet, like I said, to be more anti-inflammatory and, and taking some eating specific foods that are known to balance hormones. Um, and then also taking some natural supplements that can help balance hormones as well. Um, and honestly, it sounds kind of woo woo, but I think doing a lot of self care um, as well, and you know, doing yoga and meditation and things that help um, calm your stress response was really key for me as well. Right, we like woo woo here. <laughs> we're we're all about woo. -woo. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, which foods and which supplements uh, help you balance your hormones? Yeah, well, one of the things that I changed was my caffeine intake. Um, I was drinking, you know, a few cups of coffee a day and often on an empty stomach. And so um, switching to either decaf coffee or herbal teas um, or even sometimes like matcha that has caffeine, but it has a different kind of um, response when you when you consume it. So that was one of the things. There are certain foods like eating a lot of um, wild caught seafood and healthy fats from avocados and nuts and that kind of thing. Um, and then supplement wise, there were there were a few that really um, worked well for me. One was um, Vitex or Chase Berry. Mm -hmm. um, another was. DIM, which is basically compounded cruciferous vegetables, mm -hmm. and that really helps to lower estrogen levels if you have, um, so even eating lots of, you know, broccoli and cabbage and Brussels sprouts and that kind of thing, um, if you're a woman that's estrogen dominant, that can be really mm -hmm. helpful in bringing um, those levels down and getting your hormones more balanced. So I suppose that... Um you know, uh, for example, being vegetarian or vegan and eating a lot of soy, that's not a good idea. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not um, somebody that eliminates any food groups entirely. And so if I, if I can find especially um, sprouted and non-organic, er, and non-organic, non-GMO, um, mm. Uh, soy or tofu, I will eat that sometimes, but definitely in in moderation, you know, at most a couple times a week. And I think you have to really pay attention to the quality because they can raise estrogen levels. Mm, yes, yes. Um, speaking about leaky gut syndrome, uh, it's quite prevalent in this society nowadays. Um, how do you explain that? And how did you find out that you had it? Yeah, well, it makes sense because we're all eating crap all day long, right? We're just, mm -hmm. the American diet especially is uh, pretty, pretty terrible with processed foods and tons of sugar and chemicals and um, all kinds of things that are known to be triggers for leaky gut. Um, you know, again, I don't swear off any food groups entirely, but for certain people, gluten can be um, a big trigger for leaky gut. And especially if you're eating, you know, toast at breakfast and a sandwich at lunch and pasta for dinner and cookies for dessert. And um, so I think that it's not surprising that uh, most Americans have some kind of digestive problems um, mm -hmm. considering our diets. And, and I figured out that I had it after years of suffering and trying all different kinds of medications and going the, the true Western route, basically just take this pill and you'll be better. And, and mostly it didn't work. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I, when I started going to see that holistic doctor, she was the one that told me about leaky gut and diagnosed me. And um, that was honestly one of the, the fastest things to heal for me. It was much quicker than balancing my hormones um, because your diet affects your gut so much. And, you know, the faster you change it, the faster you can heal. So, um you know, by now our listeners know that we're very big on the gut biome. How did you um, reestablish or clean up your your gut health? Yeah. So I'd say there was probably five main things that I did. Um, the first is probably very obvious is probiotics. And I would take those in a supplement form and then also get them from foods like fermented vegetables, kimchi, sauerkraut. Um, I drink a lot of kombucha um, and things that naturally have um, probiotics in them. Mm. I also um, really struggled with um, acid reflux. And so Mm. I learned, I'm sure a lot of your readers probably know this too, but it seems counterintuitive that acid reflux is actually caused by low stomach acid. And so doing things to increase the acid in my stomach, like drinking apple cider vinegar before meals or taking um, a digestive enzyme was really helpful. Um, So those are two things. Again, changing my um, diet to be more anti-inflammatory. I really try to get two to three servings of fruits and vegetables in at every single meal. Um, Mm -hmm. And I find that to be more beneficial to my diet than taking things away. Um, For me personally, I'm not gluten intolerant or celiac or lactose intolerant or anything. So um, while I try to eat those things in moderation, I more so try to focus on getting the good stuff in instead of restricting myself. Um, right. Yeah. So eating a lot of vegetables, especially fiber, drinking a green smoothie every day was one of the fastest things that helped me um, mm. get those vegetables in and improve my digestion, especially if I added like flax or chia or hemp seeds or something that had a lot of fiber. It really helps regulate digestion. Right, right. So what, uh, what diet are you currently on? Do you have a specific diet or it's just... Yeah, not really. Um, I guess I call it the real food diet. I mostly just try to eat as food as close to its natural form as possible and limit all processed foods. Um, I, I really try to limit any refined flours and sugars. But again, mostly I just try to eat lots of Um, anti-inflammatory foods. So fruits, vegetables, seafood, um, lots of healthy fats and foods that contain lots of good protein and fiber. Okay. Okay. You also mentioned that uh, you were insulin resistant, which is one step away from being diabetic. How did you control that issue? Yes, that was perhaps most scary to me when I found out I was insulin resistant. And I think a lot of people will say, but you're thin, you know, you can't, insulin resistance only happens when you're overweight. But um, a lot of women with PCOS especially um, are insulin resistant. And so a lot of it was just learning how to manage my blood sugar levels by um, honestly eating pretty low carb in general. And the only carbs that I really tried to eat were from fruits and vegetables Mm -hmm. um, and whole grains. And um, also, you know, eating at regular times, eating within the first um, hour of being awake, um, and then taking a few things to help manage um, my blood sugar levels as well. I took um, inositol, which is basically a B vitamin, um, and it helps to balance blood sugars. And um, let's see, what else did I take for that? Um, you know, I guess it really came down to the obvious stuff, um, avoiding sugar and Mm -hmm. paying attention, realizing that even with something's not sweet, that carbs are, you know, turned into glucose when you, uh, eat them. So trying to avoid lots of carbs, avoid added sugar, avoid processed carbs. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Um, can you tell us, um, maybe, um, you know, of course, us guys are not familiar with that, but you're, you're talking to a lot of women on the, on the show. 
-hmm. How can imbalanced hormones affect your health? Oh my and, gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, your hormones control everything and men included. You know, I always kind of thought before this, oh, hormones, that's just like PMS or something. But hormones control your energy, your mood, your, um, you know, hunger levels, your sleep quality, your uh, everything, you know, what's happening, your stress levels. So um, I think it's just as important for men and women both to have um, to work to have balanced hormones. Yeah, well, again, you know, there's hormone levels that, that all men and women have, um, and including, like, one of my issues that was causing a lot of my acne was um, high testosterone levels, and mm. I didn't even really realize that women could have testosterone, and, of course, we all do, and men have estrogen, and, mm. um, and your thyroid, and, you know, it, it affects your metabolism and your ability to gain or lose weight, and... Um, yeah, so I think really paying attention to your diet, eating eating foods that are hormone balancing and that don't bring huge spikes in your glucose levels or spikes in cortisol, like um, you know, cortisol is a stress hormone, and caffeine and alcohol and sugar are all things that can really affect that, and which then affects your sleep and your stress levels and your energy, and so right. yeah, right, it, right. It's, so. it's all so connected. It's all uh, uh, completely rebalancing your, your diet, your lifestyle. Speaking of stress, how do you manage your stress? Well, I really do struggle with a lot of anxiety. So this is something that's a constant struggle for me. But um, I've found a few things to be exponentially helpful. Um, the first is regular yoga practice. Um, which I, I challenged myself this spring to do yoga every day for 30 days and just see how I felt. And, and I, I actually did it, which was the first time I think I've ever worked out 30 days in a row. Um, hmm. But I've never felt better. I was, you know, my, it just, it really clears my mind. It gives me um, motivation. It gives me focus and concentration and improved flexibility and balance. And I just, I can't say enough good things about, doing a regular yoga practice. Um, I also am a big fan of meditation. Uh, there's an app on my phone called Headspace that I use pretty regularly. And they actually have an anxiety um, kind of series that you can go through. And that's been honestly really helpful for me. Um, it's just like a 10 minute session that I'll do a few times a week um, or sometimes in a moment if I start noticing, oh my gosh, I'm feeling really anxious. I just need to calm down. I'll just pop in my headphones and listen to one of, one of those meditations. And um, so I love that. I also, I go to therapy. I have, I do a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy to kind of change the way that I respond to stress and the way that I think about everything. <laughs> um, and that's been really helpful. And then, you know, just making time to take care of yourself, whether that's um, going for a walk and being outside. Being outside is amazingly helpful for, for stress. Um, yes, yes. You know, um, Earth, earthing, earthing or just walking in the woods. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be in a bad mood if you're outside on a beautiful day. And, that's right. Uh, yeah. So I, I try to get out every day. I try to take Epsom salt baths a few times a week and just, you know, it's, I, I used to think of it as like a guilty pleasure and an, an indulgence, but really it's, it's just taking care of yourself and it's a, you know, vital part of health. Absolutely. Yeah. What about your sleep? My sleep. Yes. So I try to stick to a, a sleep schedule. I try to get in bed by 10, you know, no electronics, no TV, um, especially no phone and, um, and get a good night's rest. And I usually, you know, I work from home, so I don't really have to wake up super early or be anywhere or even get dressed if I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually am up between seven and eight, but um, I, I really, I try to get, you know, eight to at least eight hours of sleep a night and some, some, some months are better than others, but mm -hmm. um, I think getting rid of the electronics is the best thing to do for good sleep. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing that.
Yeah. Um, your website is called uh, Root and Revel. Can you explain the name? Yeah, yeah. So Root, um, I, I wanted, you know, the, the tagline of Root and Revel is the balance between good and good for you. And while I am really into um, holistic health and anti-inflammatory foods and, um, you know, you could call me a health nut, I also like to be, I, I'm a real person. I'm very, um, I try to keep everything very approachable. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have McDonald's. Sometimes I, <laughs> you know, Ooh. eat Ooh, birthday no. cake. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> But it happens. That's real life. Every now and then, you know, you're on a road trip and you have to stop and what can you do? So um, I tried to make it, and more so than that, I, I also think that food should be a positive thing. I try to have a very um, positive relationship with food. Like I said, I always focus more on trying to add more good in than take things away. I don't like restrictions and sacrifice and deprivation. And so, but I also have seen the the power of, you know, food firsthand and how important it is to eat a healthy diet. So finding this balance is sort of what, what the website is about. And so I, I thought root is sort of, you know, reminds me of food and health and getting back to basics, the root of the issue, the root cause of your health problems and that kind of thing. And balancing that with revelry and celebration and just enjoying life and, and having a good time as well. Good, good. Uh, I found that personally when I travel, I always carry uh, paleo snacks with me. Yeah. That, uh, you know, they're highly portable. You can s stick them in the bag anywhere in your pockets. You know, I have my Epic bars, I have my Kind bars. Yeah, I love and, Epic uh, bars. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, it also saves me a lot of money mm -hmm. because uh, even, even the crappy food out there is pretty expensive. So... <laughs> Yeah. Especially, you know, you like next week I'm going to be in, on the plane. I'm going to have my snacks in my pockets because there's no way I'm going to eat that food yeah. you know, in the plane. And same uh, in the airports where you're waiting three to six hours for your plane. You don't want to go and buy this stuff that they sell you at the airport, which is right. overpriced. Right. So I always carry my snacks with me. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Well, Mark, your turn. Thank you very much. I've got a confession to make. I went to McDonald's yesterday. <gasps> oh, shame yeah. on you. I'm shame not on you. A guilty pleasure. Yes. Shame on you. I pleasure. used the bathroom. Look, you, it's uh. not something you do every day, but, you know, a couple times a year, if you have McDonald's, you're not going to die. No, I, think, no I, I, think. I just went in to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that might kill you. Uh, yeah. I, I was I thinking that. that, actually. I was going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it is tempting yeah as um as i drive for right here companies every day uh, i do jump into uh, fast food just to use the bathroom because <laughs> ty typically they don't care whether you use their bathrooms or not yeah. they're too busy anyway uh the gas stations are a little more picky they look at you kind of funny if you uh go straight to the bathroom without buying anything. But. Yeah. Especially when you drive an electric car, that really cheeses them off. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> um, now, what was I going to ask? Yes. Dim. He was talking about dim, which is yes. uh, that, uh, that, that's compressed um, vegetables, isn't it? Yeah, it's cruciferous vegetables. So all your broccoli, <laughs> cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Hmm. Where'd you get that from, just out of interest? I order all of my supplements from Amazon, honestly. Oh, really? Yeah, super easy, free shipping, shows up at your doorstep, good prices, and they have some high quality brands on there. I do, you know, obviously pay attention to the labels, make sure that I'm buying a clean supplement that um, doesn't have a lot of fillers and additives and that kind of thing, but they've got some great, great supplements there. Excellent. The only thing is I can't read my own writing. I've been taking scrupulous notes and I can't <laughs> read what I've said. Uh, yes, you, you were saying earlier that you know, rather than eliminate stuff, you, you you just make sure you take more of the good stuff. So you you to endeavor, I, I guess, to balance out all the food groups that you're taking. Yeah, okay. basically, and it's sort of you know by proxy, you end up eating less of the bad stuff because you yeah. filled up on the good stuff. Yeah, I, would, I was just wondering. Do you sometimes eliminate certain food groups first to see if they're affecting you? Absolutely, yes. I've done 
several elimination diets and experiments with, okay, I'm going to cut out gluten for 30 days, or I'm going to cut out dairy for 30 days and, and see how I feel. And mm. um, yeah, honestly, for me personally, I didn't, I didn't notice a difference. Um, I, and I think a lot of people that aren't you know, celiac or have a sensitivity or an allergy to certain foods find that they might feel better when they cut those out because not necessarily because they're not eating gluten, but because they're not eating cake and pizza and pasta and these high carb processed yeah. foods um, in general. Um, so that's more in general, I try to minimize my intake of those refined carbs and sugars um, and that, that works for me rather than being gluten-free all the time. Excellent. Excellent. Now, one of the things I was struck on by listening, you know, when I was listening to your chat was you seem to use a lot of tools, you know, sort of apps and, you know, other bits and pieces like that. Mm -hmm. Are there any that you'd recommend people uh, put into their sort of health arsenal, as it were? Yeah, let's see. I've got my phone here. We'll see what some of my favorites are. Well, that Headspace app is my favorite meditation app. Um, there, is, there are two apps that I use to track um, my cycle, which is great for women, obviously. Glow and My Flow are two, and you kind of can track all of your symptoms, and um, you know, it can help whether you're trying to conceive or just trying to regulate your hormones and that kind of thing. Um, let's see some other sources. Well, Thrive Market is, um, an online retailer. I don't know if you're familiar with it, mm -hmm. but, um, yes. I think, I think it's just in the U S right now. Um, it is, yeah. yeah, but that's, I buy a ton of pantry staples there. They've got, you know, really clean ingredients that I always say it's like Costco meets Amazon meets whole foods and, um, Super convenient, healthy, natural stuff, and at a great price. So that's another Excellent. resource I use. Um, any others? Oh, let's see. Um, I mean, I read a lot of blogs and books about health, and um, I would say Dr. Axe's website is a huge wealth of knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I use that a lot. There's a lot of doctors that have, you know, gone to med school, practice for decades, and then found um, more healing and success when they've gone the holistic route and they've written yeah. a lot of books. So um, there's a few books that I, I always recommend to people. One is um, Clean Cuisine, which is an anti-inflammatory um, mm -hmm. diet book. There's... Um, a book called Woman Code, which is more about balancing your hormones and um, female uh, reproductive health. There's um, the Adrenal Thyroid Revolution, which is mm -hmm. really good for stress and obviously if you have any thyroid disorders. And so, um, yeah, I think just reading and educating yourself and not just trusting any old doctor because they're a doctor and yeah. you know, really paying attention to your symptoms. There's so many things that are underdiagnosed or like thyroid where doctors are still using out of date ranges and yeah. that kind of thing. So I think it's really important to be your own advocate. Super, super. Now you've given us quite a lot of information and I'm sure that there are some who are going to want to know more. Uh, where can people find out more about you? Sure. Well, um, Root and Revel is my website. So it's just mm -hmm. root, A-N-D-R-E-V-E-L.com. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm on social media, same handle at Root and Revel. Um, yeah, and I guess that's about it. Super job. Excellent. Alan, back to you. Uh, yes, yeah, just one final question. Do you have any, do you have any talks, events, or any, any seminars or anything coming up? Um, I am going to ShiftCon in uh, February, and um, that's kind of like a healthy um, – food conference and I'm one of the semifinalists for best healthy recipes. Um, so hopefully fingers crossed, I might, I might win that. Um, and other than that, um, I don't think I have any events coming up. Um, I always run my free seven day green smoothie challenge on my website. So anybody can come join that um, and do a, a green smoothie a day with me. Um, mm. Yeah. Excellent. Now, you, you've also uh, written a book as well, I think, haven't you, Kate? 
Yes, um, I've written several books. Um, one happened to have right here behind me. This was uh, my first real published book. This came out a couple years ago, but it's called Atlanta Chef's Table. Um, this is uh, not necessarily healthy recipes. This was um, something that I wrote when I was still uh, food writing for magazines and, and suffering. <laughs> um, but I also uh, did a self-published ebook earlier this year that is a green smoothie guide. Um, mm -hmm. So that's available for sale on my site. And um, I'm sure I could provide all of your readers with a coupon code if they would like to uh, purchase a copy. So um, maybe we can put that in the show notes or something. Yeah, we can put that in the show notes. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Of course. Anything Thank else? You. And, uh, and, and uh, I would like a copy if you, wanna, if you don't mind uh, sending me uh, one through email. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can always review it for you as well in the magazine if you want. Oh, that's great. A, that's something we can do. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Super job. Right. Alan, is, yes. is there anything else that we've, uh, we've, you think we should mention, Kate? Oh, mm, I don't know. I think you covered everything. But I just always say the healthy food can be delicious. I think there's still such a stigma that if you eat healthy, it means steamed broccoli and baked chicken every night. And that is not the case at all. Mm -hmm. I always, you know, I think that I bring a unique perspective having a restaurant background and knowing that flavor, to me, flavor is paramount and it's yeah, just sort of a bonus yeah. that everything also is really good for you. Right. Super as, a, as a French chef, I always um, also do that in all my books. Um, I give my uh, readers uh, healthy but tasty recipes. Yes. You know, um, most of them in the French kind of, you know, um, background but not necessarily sometime i uh, i come up with recipes that i've done at work or something like this so so i understand the, the whole concept of healthy food doesn't have to taste like cardboard right exactly <laughs> well and as a french chef Ellen, i have a question for you then how do you you know to me and this is obviously um an americanized view but there's when i go to france i eat so much bread and cheese so how do you uh, how do you balance that kind of French cuisine with all the the heavy? Well, you know, I mean, uh, French cuisine is the same as every as everything else. You get to pick and choose what you want, sure. and uh, you don't have to eat a whole bunch of cheese and bread, but it is tastier there for sure. The other thing too <laughs> is, uh, so I do when I go to France, I do splurge a little bit and eat a little more bread than I uh, would you. Usually, because here at home, I don't have any bread. I mm -hmm. just don't eat bread. I have cheese. I love cheese, so I eat cheese. Um, <clears throat> but I pick and choose the kind of cheese. Like, I only use um, fermented cheese and, uh, like, raw cheese, not yeah. processed, mm -hmm. you know, not pasteurized, just natural. And I tend to digest those very well. Um, as far as the bread is concerned, uh, one thing that a lot of people are not aware is that uh, the... the the wheat in France has a lot lower gluten content than the yeah. American wheat. And so I, it doesn't affect me there the way it affects me here. For example, if I eat bread here, American made bread, I tend to get rashes. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not allergic per se, but I am sensitive to it. Sure. In France, I can eat all the bread I want and I don't get any problem. No problem yeah, at all. Yeah, so interesting. It was just... Yeah. Yeah, we're so industrialized here, ruining all the, all the good stuff. Right, right. So, um, you know, in America, uh, wheat has seven times the gluten as in France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven times more. Crazy. And most of the wheat is also genetically engineered in this country, where in France they don't. Right. So yeah, you that, hear that all the time. People who are even celiac and then can eat pasta in Italy because their flour is so, you know, their wheat so different. Yes, yes. So that's my answer to your question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I do um, I do eat pastries there, but again, I, I because in general, cakes in America are very sweet and very um, mm. the enormous, uh, you know, uh, portions, where in France you can get, you know, a few nice macarons and a nice, right. you know, a few chocolate candies on the side, like the, the real kind, not the 
processed kind like truffles and things like mm. this and and you just just enjoy them um, in small quantities but you because the flavors are more intense and and typically the quality is a lot better you don't need to eat a whole lot of them you know i'm okay. typically a, with four macarons i'm done you know that's yeah. it and you know compared to that to a big slice of birthday cake in america that's loaded with sugar mm -hmm. uh, it's nothing and uh you can get a beautiful beautiful gorgeous french pastry you know made with uh, a fruit puree or mousse or something very light like this mm -hmm. and you feel indulgent but yet you're not really um crossing the the line as far as uh, sugar levels is going so it's all about uh, and it's also one of my principles, it's all about portion size as well. Yeah. You yeah. can indulge in small quantities, but make sure to enjoy it. So don't scoff it down. Right. That's a lot of, uh, that's a problem I see with Americans. They eat so fast, they don't enjoy the food. Right. They you don't need, even, yeah. You need to get, go to a tea room and sit down, have a, a chat with your friend, uh, enjoy your tea or your coffee drink and enjoy a nice pastry at the same time and just enjoy life and enjoy the time with your friend and enjoy the the, the, the taste and the flavor of, of what you're drinking and what you're eating. Mm. There's no need, there shouldn't be a need for rushing, but in in, country, in this country where everything has to be rushed, you know, mm -hmm. fast food, fast, fast this, fast that, people are eating in their cars and, and this and that, it's crazy. People are not eating their food, they're, they're swallowing their food. Yeah. Absolutely. That's one of the things I always try to tell myself as well is like, if I'm going to allow myself to indulge in something, I'm going to savor every last bite. I'm not going to mindlessly scarf something down that's bad right. for me. Right, right. In the micro, I'm also a microbiotic counselor. In the microbiotic world, they say you should chew each bite 50 times before you swallow it. I tried that once. I said, okay, I, they, you know, you should chew your food until it's liquid before you swallow. And yeah. after three bites, my jaw was so tired. I thought, well, I'm just going <laughs> to stop eating because my jaw hurts. <laughs> well, think of it as jaw exercise. Yeah. But there's more to it than that. There's, uh, and, and this is very important. A lot of people are not aware that when you chew your food, you mix it with saliva. Mm -hmm. And saliva starts the digesting process, the enzyme mm -hmm. in your saliva actually starts digesting the carbohydrates and so on before it gets to your stomach. So if you swallow your food without mixing with saliva, <clears throat> not only you have big chunks of food that your stomach has a hard time you know, processing, but you're not helping your digestive system by, by not mixing it with saliva the proper amount. Yeah. So I'm not... I'm not suggesting drooling over your food, but at least give it a good, give it a good chew and, you know, help your body. Because one thing yeah. I noticed, I don't know if you noticed that, but in America, there's a tendency to, and especially with men, you see that with men more than with women, with big stomachs. Mm -hmm. And my, my take on this is people swallowing their food, the food goes bunk into the stomach, it, the, the stomach has a hard time processing and then the stomach just keeps on expanding Living and expanding money. because, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's something to be said about chewing. Uh, I, I, I still remember a story that uh, my microbiotic teacher told us about this camp su survivor, this um, Nazi camp survivor that said that he, the only way he survived is by consciously chewing his food as long as possible because wow. he would he would extract every single atom of of goodness out of it and you know they serve them slop it's right. not even it's not mm -hmm. even food but whatever it was you know he found a way to stay alive by by doing that so that's a good lesson to remember when we when we uh, consider how we eat our food and how we yeah. uh, swallow it yes. you know yeah, and I will say, you know, I, I joked that I couldn't, my jaw hurt after chewing for 50, 50 times per bite, but I did, um, that was one of the things that I did do to help my digestion, and I do feel like it can also help with weight loss because you fill up faster because you're eating slower, and yeah. just eating slower in general is, I think, better for, you know, as you said, yeah, for your mind yeah, yeah. to enjoy the food, to help your stomach digest things easier. Mm -hmm. 
same thing with drinking a lot of water or any liquids, especially cold liquids with your meals is another thing that can really hinder digestion. Yes, yes. Speaking of hormones, and again, there's something that people don't know. Um, we, there is a hormone that lives somewhere in our stomach digestive system that will let us know if we are done. Mm-hmm. There's a signal that says, I'm done. If I, if I eat anymore, I'm going to get sick. Or, and um, it's a very important signal to pay attention to it because if you swallow your food too fast, your body doesn't have time to give it a signal. So you can swallow, swallow, swallow until your stomach's about, you know, this big. And yet you're still not getting the signal where when you slow down and you eat your food slowly, eventually your body will, will say, okay, I'm done. I've, I've, I've had enough, you know, right, right. now it's time to stop. So, um, you know, and, and typically it shows if you pay attention and that's another thing, people don't pay enough attention to their bodies and the signals. Yes. And so the signal for me is that I'm starting to get nauseous. Mm-hmm. And if I feel that it's like, okay, I'm, I have to stop now. I have enough. Right. But typically, because I, I have much better control over my food intake than most people have, I know exactly what size serving is enough for me to be to feel satisfied. Mm-hmm. You know, so compared to a lot of people, I eat like a bird, but I'm still a healthy old bird. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. 65, and I, I I can still run circles around people half my age. In, in yeah, general. yeah. I think that's really important. It is Super important. Job. Thank you again, Kate, for being on the local paleo show. And here comes the joke. And as we say in Texas, a votre santé, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that all the time in Texas. Yes, all <laughs> yeah. the time. They, they, say it, they say it in Louisiana as well. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Kate. It's been wonderful having listening and listening to you. Um, uh, and I'm sure we'll have you back again sometime soon to talk more. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Yeah,